Hello everybody, this is Tim once again here with my review for Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood. Just check out my deluxe edition as always right here. All I really like the cover to this one. I prefer the original covers for the VHS boxes, but nah, if you gotta have a new one, this is pretty decent. Uh, oh, and you might wonder in the back, of course. Her Mind Awoke Jason from the Dead. Special features killer commentary by the director, John Carl Beekler, and actors Laura Park Lincoln and Kane Hodder. Jason's Destroyer, the making of the film, slash scenes, intro, slash, uh, and, well, just the slash scenes, Mind Over Matter, The Truth About Telekinesis, uh, Makeover by Maddie, Need a Little Touch Up Work, My Ass, which is like two of the actresses from the film, and it was a little reunion thing with them, but, uh, this film is directed by John Carr Beekler. Any people in the, who are horror fans know he's a special effects guy who does a lot of special effects for a lot of horror films. He's really, you know, good at doing special effects. Uh, he's directed another film, at least one other one. I don't remember what exactly it was, but I know he's directed at least one other one. Uh, the film stars Laura Park Lincoln uh, and Kane Hodder. Uh, music's by Harry Manfredini. The score, I think, is decent. And when I say decent, that's not a bad thing. It's just I think it's great. I just think it's pretty good. I really like it, but I don't think it's you know it's still I still don't think it's as good as the first four. That's me once again. But um, jump to the film here. In this film, you got a well. It's been ten years after part six, I believe, according to the timeline. So it's ten, the beginning of the film is ten years after part six. I'm pretty sure. And you got young Tina, uh, played by the girl. I think the young Tina the actress's name is Jennifer Banco. I could be wrong. Same little girl from Texas Chainsaw Massacre three. Uh. And uh, her dad like drinks sometimes, and he gets the keys an alcoholic, and he hits the uh, hits the mom, uh, and so she runs out. She's mad. She gets into a little boat. She's out in the middle of the, the lake. Uh, he runs out there. He's trying to tell her to come back and telling her he's sorry and everything, but she kills him on accident with her psychic abilities. Well, that's right. She has psychic abilities, people. So they they pretty much stretch the plot line as far as they can almost go with this story here but uh, it's cool at the same time adding a new character uh well they pretty much stretch like the supernatural plot line as far as they can go here besides jason goes to hell which stretches it so far it snaps <laughs> but uh they pretty much stretch it as far as they can go here by adding in another girl who has adding in another character that has special abilities this time psychic abilities or telekinesis i mean um but it's all right. It makes for a really fun time. But uh, she accidentally kills her dad on accident because she's mad at him. She can't control her abilities yet, so the water starts bubbling and the fucking like dock starts shaking with him on it, which is a pretty cool scene. He falls down into the water, gets killed, drowns. Uh, pretty cool scene. I really enjoyed it. I like the way it was done. Um, so then you skip a couple years later, and she's now like in her teenage years. It's she got at least what character-wise like 17, 18, something like that. So. After all this time, they still never, they never got Jason's body out of the lake, and they never got her dad's body out of the lake. Like, what the fuck's wrong with the Crystal Lake fucking police department in this town? It's just, they're just pitiful. But anyway, besides that stupid shit like that, um, jump into the film, you got new characters here. Uh, you got Mrs. Shepard, who is, a uh, Tina Shepard, the character, the character's name is Tina Shepard, this, uh, the telekinetic girl is. Her mom, Mrs. Shepard, is... The actress does fine, the one that plays her. And then you got the guy that plays her doctor, her doctor in the film, which is trying to help her. It's the same guy from, I think his name, the, the real, I think the actor's name might be Terry Kisher or something like that or similar to that. But it's the guy that played Bernie in fucking Weekend at Bernie's Easter Road. I, I like that movie. So, so having him here in, in this film is a bonus. But he's her doctor and you think he wants to help her, but he really wants to exploit her for some reason, some goal. It never really quite explains it. I mean, what, why is he doing that? Is he working for S.H.I.E.L.D.? Is he trying to get her to sign up for the Avengers Initiative? Uh, I don't know. Does he working for the shop from the Stephen King stories? I don't know. It never really explains it. So that kind of goes nowhere. But, um, so he's like trying to exploit her at the same time and her powers go out of whack whenever her emotions are at her peak and he wants to like, uh, document documentation of her doing shit so he gets her like makes her mad and she moves this matchbook because he stretches her out and he asks her what was she thinking about she goes she was thinking about him 
Uh, Laura Park Lincoln in the film, she does fine. Uh, she's a very likable character. I really like the character of Tina, and like you root for her because of the stress and stuff that she's under from her doctor and the way all everybody around there treats her because she tries to fit in and everybody just treats her like shit, all the teenagers do, who are living that, like the house next door. But, um... Because for the teenage characters, you get a girl named Robin who has, like, the hots for this pothead guy, and she has, like, her geeky friend. As other than the psychic story in this film, there's really nothing new in this film. Other than that, the story of the teenagers and everything is generic, like a like a generic Friday the 13th movie. Adds really nothing new to the franchise, and it's really generic. You get, like, such stereotypical cliche characters like the geek, keeps talking about sci-fi shit, and then you get the pothead whose only characteristic is he's the pothead. <laughs> So you get generic, stereotypical characters, shit like that, who, and you get, like, the geeky girl who wants to snag the pothead, I guess, because he's hot stuff, but, um, uh, she, like, fixes herself up later on in the movie, trying to look good enough for him, I guess, or to attract him. You got the bitchy girl who's just a bitch, that's pretty much it, but the girl who plays the bitchy girl, the character's name is Melissa, she does a great job playing a bitch, I believe she was a bitch, this actress does really good at playing an asshole, but, uh, other than that, you, well, you got the character Nick, who's like the nice guy who has a crush on Tina, and Melissa's jealous of it because she wants to fuck Nick and doesn't want Tina to fuck Nick. <laughs> so all through the movie, she like tries to fuck with Tina because she knows that Nick has the hots for her. But uh, he's entertaining. This guy's likable. I don't like him anywhere near as much as Tommy Jarvis. But uh, as for a male lead, he's he's decent. He's okay. This actor's likable. But uh, okay, she's there. She starts missing her father. She tries to bring him back to life out in the uh, out in the lake, but accidentally breaks the chain around Jason's neck. Jason comes back to life. Comes up by the water in a cool scene. He's like splashing around everywhere. She passes out. Jason decides not to kill her for some reason. Just walks off into the woods. I guess to stretch his legs. He didn't want to get back in the killing motion too early. I guess. So Jason's back in the woods. He fucking uh, runs into this dude who's there. Uh, the actor is out, uh, well, the actor is also, was also in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, he was the one that, uh, was, uh, with Kate Hodge in the film, he was also in the remake of Not Living Dead, I forgot the actor's name, but, uh, he does fine here, him and his woman are, like, their car broke down, they're heading to the woods, he's the cousin of the character Nick in the film, and they're playing on surprising with a surprise party, it's his birthday, so they're trying, him and his woman are trying to get there, well, she's trying to get him there, he doesn't know about it. Until she tells him because he wants to just camp there in the woods and doesn't want to walk the entire way. But, uh, so she tells him, try to get him, motivate him to keep going. So they're heading there, they're going through the woods, and then, of course, he goes to take a piss. And Jason shows up, stabs her in the back, back of the head. You get a little blood coming down Jason's hand where he's got it over her mouth, which is pretty entertaining. He comes back, sees his woman dead. Jason pulls the spike out of her. Well, he stabs her in the back of the throat is what it was, I believe. He, uh, he, Jason pulls the spike out of her throat. Takes off chase after him. He makes it pretty far, but Jason says, fuck this shit, grabs it, and just slings it directly towards him like that. And it feels flying right straight into his spinal cord and cripples him. He can't walk. He falls down on the ground. Jason runs up to him, or power walks up to him, lifts him up on the spike, and like uh, just slings him off of it. Pretty decent kill scene. You get a scene where Tina like, has like a vision of it or sees it. But uh, it's kind of weird seeing somebody see, usually when you have a premonition or see something like that, usually before it happens, so it's kind of weird like she sees it after it happens, but whatever, I guess, it's still an entertaining scene. And you got Melissa who like finds out that Tina used to be in the mental hospital and she's trying to like be a bitch to her because Nick likes her and he keeps trying to like hook up with her, but she doesn't want him to get hooked up with her because she thinks she's a really fucked up individual, doesn't want to complicate Nick's life, <laughs> but uh, you got a scene where she... Sweet talks the nerd into doing this for doing this the geek guy to doing this thing for her, where he dresses up and, and like a tries to make his outfit look like a straight jacket and she's like is this the uh, Tina is this the way they wear those straight jackets back at the mental hospital and she fucking turns around and starts doing her uh, uh, telekinetic thing causes her pearl necklace Melissa's pearl necklace to like rise up and break into pieces which is an entertaining scene I almost wish she would have broke Melissa's neck because she's such a hateable character that you really just don't give a fuck what happens to her matter of fact her whole purpose is for you to root for her to die. So when you eventually get it, it's like a prize. But, um, yeah, she's, she's a total bitch. Couldn't stand her. But uh, then you get another scene where Jason's out in the woods after he killed uh, uh, Nick's cousin. And he fucking finds these one these two people camping out in the woods, this guy and his girlfriend. He goes to get some more wood. He calls the Terminator, I'll be back, which is, <laughs> I thought that was mildly funny. When he goes off to look for wood, he quotes the Terminator. He goes out to look for some wood. He's packing some back to the tent. Jason comes up behind him, fucking rams his arm through his back, and then snaps his neck. 
pretty entertaining scene. I enjoyed that kill. So Jason comes there and you get one again, one of my favorite kills in the entire franchise. Definitely in at least the top four kills of the entire franchise, in my opinion. Where Jason grabs the girl in the sleeping bag, fucking hits her against a tree. That was really entertaining. I love that. That was really creative. I don't know who came up with that in the film, whether it was the director or Kane Hodder, but whoever, it was really cool. Uh, the original uh, version of the scene involved him hitting her like multiple times, which eventually got really repetitive. And the one hit kill is, to be honest, the most effective one. So this is actually a. a a redone version of a scene that works better than the original. So that's cool. Um, meanwhile, back there, uh, fucking her doctor, Dr. Cruz is the character's name. I'll just call him Bernie. Bernie doesn't, uh, <laughs> well, Bernie knows there's something going on, but it's kind of like he doesn't want to admit it because he doesn't want to leave. He wants to exploit her even more to see what he can get out of it. And she tries to tell him the stuff she's seen and everything, and Jason, like, leaves the spikes stuck in the, the, the door. Her and uh, she tries to like tell him it's out there, but he steals it and like fucking or next to the door it's stuck, and uh, he fucking steals it and puts it up and doesn't show anybody. It's like he's like hell bent on keeping her there to exploit her. And later on in the movie, he even sees like the cousin uh, Nick's cousin's uh, body like mangled in a fucking tree and still decides to stay there. But I'm like, okay. The moment I seen that, I don't care how much I was trying to exploit somebody for money. I'm getting the fuck out of there. It's over. This shit is done. But uh. That's just me. I guess he's hell bent on getting some money. I don't know, <laughs> or getting her to work for the Avengers Avengers Initiative, hang out with Iron Man. But um, so another kills in the film. You got these two that decide to go skinny dipping, but it obviously looks cold on the film. So, but uh, I guess we're supposed to believe it is summertime. I'm not for sure, but uh, they decide to go skinny dipping. Um, the girl gets in the water first, the guys get ready to get in the water, Jason pops up from behind a tree and fucking picks up, has an axe in his hand, swings it face first like that, hits while the guy's on the ground, hits him straight up in the face, and kills him, but you don't see hardly any of it, this film was notorious for having terrific gore that was cut all the fuck by the MPAA, uh, Motion Picture Association of Assholes, they just cut it all to shit, this is the most heavily cut of all the Friday the 13th, I think. Uh, maybe other than part 5, part 5 just had lame kills, but this one right here just had good kills that were cut to shit so bad, it was unbelievable. But, um, but the, some of the kills still still come out kind of decent. The sleeping bag kill came out pretty good, actually better than what it originally was. And, uh, so he's dead, and then, uh, she sees his dead body up there on the bank, and she's like, Jason pops up in the water, and then he goes under the water and grabs her by the leg and pulls her down in the water. Okay, pretty cool, he drowns her, I guess, which is entertaining. Uh, I have a phobia of drowning, so anytime someone actually does drown in a film is fucking scary and entertaining to me in some way. <laughs> so she's dead. Um, you get these two that are like out fucking in the van, and Jason fucking uh, he one of the guys gets out of the well, the guy gets out of the van. Well, one of the guys it makes it sound like it's a gay couple, but no, it's a straight couple. One of the guys, uh, which I wouldn't have a problem if it was a gay couple, but. I just thought it was funny that I almost said, I almost said, well, I think it was funny that I said one of the guys implying that it, maybe it was a gay couple, but no, it's a straight couple, and the dude gets out of the van, and he fucking walks around, and uh, he thinks it's uh, Nick's cousin there, finally made it to the surprise party, but of course it's Jason, Jason jumps out, fucking grabs his head, and has it like that, and it's like crushing down on it, you see a little bit of blood coming out of the top, but you don't see hardly anything, and the original scene, his whole fucking head was crushed into nothing, which was much cooler than this little two second scene, but then the girl sticks her head out the, the fucking window, and Jason grabs her by the neck, and then shoves like a little party popper, I think is what you call him, like right into her fucking eye, and it pops when it hits her in the eye, that was entertaining, I enjoyed that little scene right there, with the party popper death, that was okay. Like I said, you got the pothead in the film, and uh, this girl, Robin, is, like, wanting to hook up with him, and her friend, Maddie, is, like, the, the girl, the geeky girl, kind of, and uh, she wants to make herself more attractive, but, uh, so, so she does, she fixes herself up, she goes out to the woods trying to find him, uh, trying to find the pothead guy. Uh, so she's out in the woods looking for him. She, uh, she screams when she finds like a dead body. And Jason's out there in the woods. Jason takes off after her. She makes him like this little tool shed. This is really cool. Kind of like a little neat little tool shed here. And you get a creepy scene here where Jason's like, uh, she's like behind this wall. And she's looking through the cracks. And Jason's standing there like looking like that. Like moving his head like, like that. 
like looking through the cracks. You can see him looking directly at her, and it's really creepy. And he turns around, and just leaves, like casually leaves, like you're like, well, maybe he didn't see her, but obviously he did. And it's just really creepy the way it's played. And Jason's mask in this film with like the chipped off piece, like right through there, with like you can see half his jaw exposed. And it's like uh, the look of Jason, and it's really cool seeing that though, like with half his jaw exposed. And like the look of Jason in this film is the best in any of the films. So that has, this film has that going for it. Where you uh, see like every wound and knife stab and everything that Jason's had up until now from all the other films. And Kane Hodder plays Jason in this film, and Jason is really ferocious in this film. And he's just like not taking any shit at all. He's like powerhouse, similar to the way he was in part four, but he seems more, seems quicker moving and everything, and and uh, uh, a lot faster to me. Well, he seems a lot. He seems slightly more intelligent in this one than he did in part four to me. Like uh, and also more like uh, willing to just fucking go at somebody like when i say go at somebody like if you put like a brick in front of him he'd like bust through the brick he'd like ram his fist through it because there's a scene in the movie where tina's like got away from him and made it back to the house and he just fucking busts through the window and just jumps completely through it and lands down like in on the floor and it's like damn motherfucker and jason ain't fucking around in this one baby and this film has a much darker tone than part part six which i also enjoyed but uh, anyway so she's she's in the the, uh, the work shed and fucking Jason walks out walks back in he fucking rams his hand through the through the wall grabs her and then he's got this little Sith and rams his other arm through the other side of the wall and he's got a hold of her and he gets ready to hit her with it and he slings it directly towards her and then all once she don't see it it just cuts away uh, you don't even see him like get towards her you just see his hand arm like move towards her and then it just cuts away so I was like what the fuck that was a weak cut I didn't like that you didn't see shit but um. So Tina overhears Dr. Cruz and, uh, well, Bernie, Bernie and, uh, uh, Mrs. Shepard talking about how he's going to have her committed or whatever because, uh, well, basically because, uh, Miss Shepard found a tape and found out that he's really trying to explore her and he says he's going to have her committed. So Tina overhears it, takes off driving out of there and she has a vision of her mom getting killed by Jason and she crashes the car and goes off into the fucking woods. Um, originally the scene was supposed to be Jason standing there, little Jason I believe standing there holding his mom's head and his mom's head starts laughing at Tina and causes her to crash, which that would have been cool, but of course the studio thought fans were too stupid and wouldn't understand it, so they axed it and cut it out. That would have been cool to me, uh, it would have been weird though, seeing Tina see Mrs. Voorhees in a uh, vision like that. I mean, well Tina's character, her like telekinesis ability kind of like sees stuff before and after it happens, but it doesn't really say that she can like sense like spiritual stuff because I don't know what Mrs. Voorhees with like her head and stuff would have to do with a vision like really I mean what kind of sense would that make but I would still get it you know in context with the character of Jason so I would have enjoyed that either way but um uh, anyway so she's out looking in the woods um you get uh the, the dope head he goes downstairs to make himself a sandwich he gets just you, get, you see Jason standing in the corner I watched this film like a hundred times before and never hardly ever saw Jason standing in that fucking corner until I like the hundredth time. I, I'm like the hundred and second time I watched it when I seen the lightning strike and you can see him like standing back in the corner of the room. The pothead goes over to make a sandwich. He turns around, thinks it's Maddie of all people, turns around he gets stabbed in the fucking gut with a butcher knife, which I'm like, okay, another generic stab kill. So seven movies in, I want to see more than just a stab kill. You know, change it up a little bit. Stab kills were decent back in the first like one two maybe three movies we're in seven now i want to see some you know variety more variety but it's still an okay kill with the stab with the butcher knife so the pothead's dead uh robin goes into the pothead's room trying to figure out find to find where he's at and she opens up this fucking closet and you get the jump scare cat the motherfucking jump scare cat i almost feel like going out and strangling a, a, a cat just for the purpose of how much the jump scare cat has pissed me off how does this, how the fuck does the jump scare cat cliche keep getting movie roles? Who signs this shit up? Who, I mean, who agrees for the jump scare cat to be in films? But whatever. Um, I mean, well, who the fuck decided that the jump scare cat was a good idea for this film? I, I'd like to know. He needs a punch in the nuts. But anyway. So you got the jump scare cat. I hate that. She finds uh, the fucking dope heads, uh, well, the pothead's head in there. Jason comes in, hears her scream, grabs her by the neck, throws her out the window, and she falls down and hits the ground. So she's dead. Robin's dead. Her death scene here is much better than the original version where Jason just walked in, sliced her in the gut, and that was it. Uh, the more theatrical one of him throwing her out the window is cooler to me, personally. So I enjoyed that one better than the original version. So she's dead. 
Dr. Cruz and uh, Miss Shepard. Well, I called him Dr. Cruz again. I want to call him Bernie because that's what I'm used to him being is Bernie. But I guess I could call him Dr. Cruz. I mean, it's his character in the movie. So Dr. Cruz and Miss Shepard go off into the woods to try to find Tina because they see her car out there crash. So they go off into the woods to try to find her. Um, Jason kills the geek guy, uh, the geeky sci-fi guy. He's like fucking... He's just sitting there on the couch. He thinks it's Melissa because he's got the hots for the Melissa bitch character. Uh, he turns around, thinks it's, thinks it's Melissa. Jason just swings the machete. You see it just touch his neck, and then bam, that's the cut scene. He's dead. I'm like, okay, another lame death scene here. That was cut bad. You got to see more in the original version. I like the original version better. American uh, MPAA, Asshole Association of America, fucking fucked that scene up the ass royally right there. Um, but uh, So Jason makes his way back into the woods. Jason's in the woods. He attacks Dr. Cruz and uh, Mrs. Shepard. Dr. Cruz runs away, and Miss Shepard runs away, and he uses fucking... Jason comes up behind him, and he uses uh, Miss Shepard as a fucking human shield, so Jason stabs through her and kills her. So he uses her as a human shield. It makes you hate Dr. Cruz even more than you already did. But, um... So she's dead. Um, Tina's in the woods. Well, well, you know... Well, t well, later on in the film, she runs back into Nick, and uh, she knows her mom's in the woods. So she... Uh, she decides to go back into the woods. Um, so she's back in the woods. She finds her mom's dead body. Finds Dr. Cruz. He's got blood on his hands. She takes off running into the woods. Uh, Dr. Cruz gets attacked by Jason, who has a fucking, I believe, a weed whacker. He takes off after Dr. Cruz, knocks Dr. Cruz down, sticks the, sticks the weed whacker into his chest, kills him like that. It's a really quick scene. The original version of the scene is better. But this version of it, the cut version here, is still, mm, still decent. Still plays out okay. But, uh, so, Dr. Cruz is dead. Um, so it's, uh, finally, well, Tina discovers the dead bodies of the teenagers there, like the victims. And it's kind of same shit, different day here, because we've seen this for, like, all, most of the other films already. Part 6 felt way more fresh than this film. This film feels like it's got a fresh plot, kind of, with the psychic plot. But then it feels really generic with everything else. And the body finding at the end is just really generic and just screams, like, been there, done that. But, uh, so she runs into Jason out on the road, and it's like, bam, standoff, baby. So now she's, uh, <laughs> focusing all her rage on Jason when her emotions are at her peak, and she's focusing them all on Jason to unleash her telekinetic powers on him because he killed her mom. And, uh, this is when the film really kicks in the high gear, and this is what really helps the film is the final battle between Jason and Tina. This is what's so cool because she has abilities that she can actually fight Jason with mano a mano, one-on-one, -on -one, not just run around or hope to get the best of him. But, uh... <sighs> So she uh, knocks Jason into a, uses some branches to knock him into a mud puddle, then fucking electrocutes him, and that's a pretty cool scene. You see, like, the electricity running up through his body, and uh, you obviously know he's not dead. He falls down in the puddle. He's obviously not dead. He wakes up. Tina runs back to the house. Uh, it's when you get the scene with Jason jumping through the window, which was entertaining. Um, then she fucking, like, closes the door in front of him, uh, these doors in front of him. He opens them, and then she hits him on the couch. Okay, entertaining. Then she hits him with the pothead's head. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> a little fucking head like that just knocked Jason down. I'm like, eh, that's kind of stupid. So he makes it out of there, and she causes, like, a, the house to fall down on him, or part of it. So that was pretty cool. Obviously, he still isn't dead. So the part of the house fell down on him. She makes it uh, over there to uh, her house. And uh, Nick is over there, <clears throat> along with Melissa. She's talking to uh, Nick about what happened and everything. Melissa doesn't believe him. Melissa gets ready to leave, and Nick's like, stay here with us. And she's like... Fuck you. No, fuck you both. And she opens up the door, and there's Jason with a fucking axe. And, and it's kind of like Jason's like, no, fuck you. <laughs> Almost. And he, like, hits her straight in the head with the axe and grabs her and just slings her, like, over hit over the top of the fucking TV. I thought that was funny. I like that death for this character. She's the pretty much the last one to die other than Jason himself, which he doesn't even really count because he he's just going to come back in the eighth one and the ninth one and so far. So, I mean, so on and so forth. So she's dead, which is really cool. Uh, Jason starts to attack them. They uh, they try to run outside, but Jason, like, can't harder. Jason, like, leaps over there and fucking slams the door so they can get out. He's, like, really quick. See, I really like that. That's why I like Kane Hodder's version of Jason the best, or at least the one in this film uh, the best. Because he's, like, he can tell he's not fucking around. He's not going to give them a chance to escape. Cause, so it's kind of like he's a little bit smarter than the average Jason is portrayed. Or, uh... Or at least less animal, less animalistic, and more of a more of an intelligent predator. Just to rely on so much on instinct. 
But uh, they run upstairs. Jason comes up towards them up the stairs. She fucking causes a lot, a big lot, a uh, big lot to like hit him in the face. He falls backwards through the stairs, which is pretty cool. They go make it. They make it down the stairs. They're getting ready to try to hit out of there. Jason busts through the fucking. <laughs> he busts through the wall <clears throat> underneath the stairs. Comes towards him, grabs Nick, slings him into the wall, gets ready to break his back. Uh, Tina causes his fucking mask to like swell into his head. He turns around, looks directly at the camera, and causes his mask to split and mask to split in half. Before I forget, this film has another cool opening. Uh, just like all the Friday Thirteenth, well, most of them, other than Part Five. This film, this film has a cool opening uh, where you get a like a, the legend of Camp Crystal Lake told. And it's really creepy and everything. It catches you up to date and has clips of all the other films. And it shows a Jason's mask and all once the mask just like has a beam of light come down it like a zigzag and it fucking splits in half. And then you got the words Friday the Thirteenth, the final chapter in red, in red, and it just looks really cool. But uh, back to the ending here. So now you got Jason unmasked. The look of Jason here unmasked looks really fucking awesome. I just love his look. He's got like kind of like a whole rotten, a rotten like whole spot in his jaw up here, and you can kind of like see through it. Uh, believe it, yeah, I believe it's on that side, or it may be on the other side, fuck, I don't know, but either way, it looks awesome, because I'm paying more attention to the action in the scene, really, than the complete look of the Jason makeup, because I've seen the film a couple of times before, of course, but the makeup still looks fucking awesome, um, it causes a light bulb to explode, and the wire comes out of it, and wraps around his neck, pulls him up in the air, and he's, like, choking the fucking death, which is really entertaining, uh, and then she causes a hole in the floor to blow up, and he falls down in the hole. Jason jumps up, grabs her while she's checking on Nick. She slings some nails into his head. Uh, Jason gets really pissed off here. Uh, he looks way pissed off at Tina. Uh, it's like the way Kane Harder plays it. You can see the intensity on Jason's face. And then she causes some gasoline to like pour on him. Jason's kind of like, no, no, not gasoline, which I'm kind of thinking, again, why would Jason do that? I see the character as a powerhouse. I don't really see him being uh, like going, no, no, not gasoline. Maybe if he had his mask, I guess because it's hitting him in the face, he doesn't like the gasoline hitting him in the face. But, uh, because he's not wearing his mask. So he's getting hit by gasoline, she sets him on fire. He's fucking roasting, he falls down the ground. Nick comes down there and grabs Tina, they make it out of the whole house, fucking obliterates. Um, you think, you might think Jason's dead at this point, but of course he's not. So he kind of shows back up on the dock. Uh, Nick shoots him a couple times, he knocks Nick down in this little boat. He gets ready to kill Tina. And fucking Tina brings her dad back to life. Her dad bops, jumps up out of the dock, uh, brings Jason down to his knees, puts a fucking chain around his neck, and pulls him under the water. And then you get the next day. <coughs> you get the next, well, then the morning, I mean, they're being took out of their own ambulance, and it's like, uh, and uh, Nick's like, so, where's Jason? And she's like, we took care of him, and it's, you know, it's over. Boom, it's over. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of a really lame ending. It's lame because her dad comes back to life from the dead, and he's still down there in the water for some reason, and he looks completely normal and doesn't look rotted at all, even though he's been down there for like seven to eight years. So I'm like, what the fuck? And then you don't even get to see the aftermath of what happened between Jason and her dad. So again, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> it would have been cool to see Jason get took out by another undead, you know, inhuman zombie. But whatever, as the film the way it is, I'd give it three stars of a possible four. Other than the psychic plot, it hits a lot of generic notes in this franchise. It's not the best movie in the franchise, but it's nowhere near the worst. It's way better than part five. Um, I also say it's a little bit better than part three. It's not better than part four or part two. Or part one by any stretch of the imagination. Well, I'd say it's, yeah, I'd say it's a little bit better than part three. Um, but it's more generic and it's more generic feeling than part three. The psychic fun part of it is what elevates it a little bit above part part three. But yeah, uh, just to finish this film off here, this is a three star film of a possible four. I enjoy it. I don't hate it by any means or any stretch of the imagination. But uh, after part six, it just feels kind of like a little bit of the same old, same old. So I'll see you guys again with Jason Takes Manhattan.